So welcome to this extra YouTube video this week. Today, I really wanted to get out my opinions on all the Black Friday ships and whether or not I think they're worth playing, if they're fun to play, how they fit into the meta. And of course, we do have Twitch chat here and we're gonna let them vote on where they think the ship should go as well. So you get a nice round look at some of these ships. Although I think this one should be the last one you look at. <laughs> Don't necessarily take Twitch chat too seriously. Uh, but we will look at how they fit the meta, and if I think they're still fun to play, because there's some in here that fit the meta, but aren't the most interesting. Um, but we'll see. I'll also be trying to take into account the deals or how much they actually cost, trying to keep that in mind as well. Before we get started, though, I do need to mention that there are timestamps down below. This is probably going to be a very long video, so I don't really expect you guys to watch it all the way through. But if you are interested in a specific ship, you can just click there and that'll take you to exactly where I'm talking about it. For our first ship, we're looking at the Alaska. This is a ship that's been taken out of the game. You can't buy it normally. You can only get this Black Friday version on the Black Friday sales, assuming they do bring it back year after year. It is here this year and it's pretty expensive. For example, it is 16,350 doubloons right now which is what, 70, 80 bucks? I'm Canadian, so depending on your conversion rate, it'll be a little bit different. That's about the price of a full AAA game. So it's not cheap. That said, if you're someone who's looking to collect ships in the game, or if you're sad you missed out on this ship, I can see why you would want to buy this thing. It is available now for a very, very limited time. As for how I think it hits the meta, well, at tier nine, it's amazing. This is a very well-armored cruiser. It has a radar. It's got decent concealment. The guns hit relatively hard. It's got some wonky dispersion every once in a while, but you get improved pen angles like the Des Moines does. And since they're 305s, they actually carry a decent amount of pen at range. You can always switch to the HE as well to try and burn down battleships. It's a bit of a close range brawler radar cruiser that wants to use islands. I talk about this a lot using islands, it won't stand up to battleships at close or medium, long range, really. You do need to time your pushes properly. So I think that if Alaska was facing its own tier, it's gonna be an easy S tier. Even if it was before super ships came into the game, I think it's still an easy S tier. This ship does great against tier 10. The problem with Alaska and all the tier nines now, and I'm gonna say this for each one, they gotta fight super ships. So I think on the meta, it's gotta be just put down one tier. I think it's still a really, really strong ship. You're gonna absolutely crush everything in tier nine games, tier seven games, but there's a lot of up tiers nowadays into super ships. And that's why I think it's an A on the meta tier list. As for if it's fun to play, I really do enjoy this ship. I think that as a battleship player myself, I'm looking for something with a lot of hitting power, punching power, and the Alaska does that. It also has the utility of a radar to push in and aggressively impact the game and win the game for your team. It's got decent armor as well. I think this is an S tier fun ship. I don't think it's necessarily going to be the most meta, but I think I personally have a lot of fun since it's kind of fits what I like to play. I wanna have big battle impact, but I also like hitting big salvos. So given that I've put it S tier for fun and A tier in the meta, I think that means I think it's a worthwhile ship to pick up. It is expensive, but I do think if you're willing to spend money on this game, I think it's worth getting. It's a fun ship, it's really quite strong, and you're not gonna be able to buy it all the time. It's only once a year really that you can get it. So what did the chat have to say? Looks like they want it in S or A tier, which I think makes sense. Um, I guess we'll put it just in between both, but chat thinks it's also a very good ship. And I agree, I really do agree. So we'll put it, we'll put it kind of in the middle, um, just there for now. So our next ship, we have the Azashio. This is a ship I don't have a ton of experience in, I'll be honest but it is a ship that I have known about for quite some time. I think that this ship is too one-dimensional to be really considered extremely strong in the meta. It absolutely demolishes battleships. The deep water torpedoes only hit battleships and carriers, so it's a massive limitation for cap control. 
your guns hit hard, but you have such a long reload, it's a Japanese destroyer, right? It's not going to win a lot of those gun engagements. It does have decent concealment, so you are able to push and gain ground and even outspot a lot of destroyers. The problem though is its inability to actually win those engagements when you do get the drop on people. So I don't think that it's necessarily as bad as a ship which only can deal with battleships. I do think it can deal somewhat with destroyers and somewhat with cruisers through its spotting and detection. But I think the problem here is it's too one dimensional. As you can see against battleships, it crushes. It's amazing when you get those battleships all lining up in a row, the tor torps go 20 kilometers, it's ridiculous. But aside from that, it does struggle a little bit to hit any sort of battle impact. So I think as for the meta tier list and its power level, I think I'm going to put it in between B and C. I, I think I'll leave it at a C tier personally because I value battle impact and being able to do a lot of different things on the battlefield. Um, it's not D tier since it is so strong against battleships, but I can't really see myself putting it up into B because it's just so limited in that one dimension. As for the fun to play, I think I think you can have a lot of fun in this ship. I personally love outspotting enemy destroyers and then just following them around, keeping them permanently spotted, and myself just remaining undetected. It's hilarious. It's a ton of fun to do that. And of course, when you do manage to get those dev strikes into battleships, it's hilarious. So I think that as far as it being fun to play, I think it is. I think it's more fun than it is a meta ship. Um, so it'd be an A or B, but for me personally, I'd probably put it at a B. Those times where I would be lacking in that battle impact against some cruisers and other DDs, I would get a little frustrated by that. But I do think it's more fun than C tier. As for what chat thinks, it looks like they're on B tier. They Some people think it's S tier, a few people think it's D tier. Uh, yeah. I think it averages out to a B tier. In the right situation, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, but you're not always going to get that. A lot of times battleships are just gonna run and camp their spawn. That makes it difficult to really get some impact. So C tier meta, I think fun to play, B tier, and chat thinks it's B tier. So there you go. Not an amazing ship, but given the price is 6,650 doubloons, it's not bad. Keep in mind, this is another ship that has been removed from normal sale. So this is your one opportunity to really get it. So if you're interested in this very niche play style, I think it's worth a pickup. Um, I do think that it's going to be very expensive if you want to buy all of these ships that have been re previously removed from sale. Uh, but these Asho is interesting. I don't think I would necessarily recommend it over something like an Alaska, which has also been removed from sale, or some of the other ones coming up. We've got some other ones that, like Massachusetts, John Bard, some of those ships have been removed from sale as well. Next, we're taking a look at the Otago. This is personally one of my favorite ships in the game. It was my very first premium ship I bought uh, several years ago now, back in 2015. It's still a really good cruiser. I think that as time has progressed, this ship may have been power crept in some ways, but it's always hung in there thanks to its great concealment, its decent armor, um, the guns that hit really, really hard. That's a really iconic thing about the Japanese heavy cruisers. Very hard hitting HE, which is quite powerful, especially at these mid tiers. And of course, Otago has a heal. I love heals on cruisers. They allow you to play much more aggressive, take far more risks, while still being able to heal up if you get actually punished for taking that risk and still at least impact the game well into the late game. I love the sustain on the Otago. It's why I like it over other ships like, um, well, we're gonna look at the mines a little later on. I think having a heal or not, lo not having a heal on the mines certainly holds it back. Where Otago, I'm not sure where to put this one exactly. It's got great torpedoes as well. The firing angles are a little wonky, but it is able to shoot torpedoes in uh, most directions, which is quite nice. Uh, personally, as far as the power level at tier eight, I do think it's one of the stronger tier eight cruisers. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily put it S tier for tier eight cruiser strength. 
Um, I think cruisers at tier eight just tend to struggle thanks to those double up tiers into tier tens. It's pretty passive. Um, I don't know if I can say any cruiser is really all that good into those. Otago does do pretty solid though. Um, I think for different reasons, I would probably put it um, as far as meta goes. I don't know. It's in between A or B for me. I think I think as a if you get really good with Otago, it can definitely be an A tier. Um, the heal definitely allows worse players to just be okay in it. Uh, but I do think I do think it's pretty good. So I I'm gonna put it in A tier. I do like Otago a lot. As for it being fun to play, I think you can go anywhere from S tier to C tier on it being fun to play, depending on the battle you're in. If you're against tier 10s and it's just campy passive meta, I mean, a carrier comes in there and spots you the whole time, it's gonna be miserable. This ship does have decent range, but not for those up tiers. I think that as for it being an amazing battle impact kind of ship, it's not really that either. Uh, I don't know. I think Atago can get a little boring to play at times, and maybe that's why I don't play it a lot. I think it's quite good, but I do think it can just feel a little bit boring. And maybe that's just because I'm not as much of a cruiser player. I tend to enjoy battleships, big devastating salvos. Farming, well, fun at times, uh, me personally. I, I would put it in B tier for fun. It's a really good ship. I just can get myself... I don't always have the most enjoyable time in the Otago, but I do think it's a really solid ship. And then let's see what chat has. Chat has it exactly between A and B. <laughs> All right, there you go. So it is a step above B tier, according to chat, A and B. I can, I can definitely see that. Uh, we'll just kind of mix it in there. Although maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should make it a little more definitive. The ship, of course, is usually available in the premium shop. Right now, it's 7,650 doubloons, which is a decent 30% off normal. But I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. You're going to have to decide that for yourselves. Next Black Friday ship we have to look at is the Atlanta. Another ship that's been in the game for a long time. I've had a lot of games in this one as well. And unfortunately, it has not aged as gracefully as the Atari. I think that Atlanta was one of the more powerful tier seven cruisers when it came into the game. It was really fun, extremely strong. Uh, with the radar, it absolutely crushed in ranked and battle impact, getting close, dealing with DDs, farming battleships. It was really, really solid. As for the meta now, I think tier seven is extremely difficult uh, to have a ship like this anymore. Things are much longer range, and considering how floaty the shell arcs are, it's extremely difficult to hit a lot of these DDs as well. The other thing we need to consider that I haven't really been talking about, because I don't really value talking about AA all that much. To me, it's more of a fireworks show, but Atlanta specifically, we do need to mention how bad its AA is now. This used to be a no-fly zone. The instant a carrier even touched an Atlanta's AA bubble, it basically lost its planes. No longer at all. The AA is so weak because all of the multi-purpose guns here are focused on flak, and flak is quite useless because a good carrier player is just gonna dodge it all, and there's very little DPS. So. I really, really don't like Atlanta these days. I'm, I would maybe put it C tier, but given that you're fighting against tier nines sometimes and you're getting into those really, really open water maps where you just have to reposition, there's no island cover for you to use. You can't play it open water. It's a D tier for me, man. I, this might offend some people, but I think as far as its power level, it's one of the weakest ships in the entire game. I don't think there's many ships that are actually weaker than it. Now, is the Atlanta fun to play? Yes. Yes. Atlanta can be S-tier fun. If you get one of those matches where you're weaving through small little island chains, you're able to catch out DDs, you're, you're loving life. If you're farming battleships, it's really, really fun. But that's not most matches. I think we can all agree that that is not most matches. That is not most matches at all. <laughs> so I'm gonna put fun to play as C tier. 
I'm only lifting it out of D tier for how fun it is to play because maybe 10% of the time you're going to get one of those games where the Atlanta just pops off and destroys everyone. And it's really, really enjoyable. There's a lot of close islands. It's, it's, it can be fun. It can be fun. But not most of the time. Certainly not most of the time. Now then, let's see what chat has to say. The community thinks B tier. Wow. Okay. Am I just like entirely wrong here? I don't know. I think I think chat might be insane right now. I'll we're putting it B tier. I don't want to influence the vote since it's kind of still going on, but that is that is uh I might be wrong. And a lot of people enjoy Atlanta still, but I I don't think it's very good anymore at all. I think it's good in ranked. I enjoy the burn factory. Voting purely for tier 7 matchmaker. That's fair. I think, though, we have to keep in mind it does go into tier 9 games a lot. And it can go against tier 5 sometimes, too. But, yeah. We'll leave it at B tier. Chat thinks it's a lot better than I do. I think it's I think it's very, very bad these days, personally. As for the cost, it's pretty pricey. 6450 Uh That's not the cheapest ship on the market, certainly. There's a lot of tier 8s that are getting close to that money as well. Uh, considering that I think it's pretty bad these days and it's only going to get worse as the meta shifts towards a little more passive, longer range games, I don't think it's worth it. But it's up to you at the end of the day. For our next ship, well, we have airplanes. We have our first premium carrier on the list. And this is the Chikalov, the premium Russian tier 8 carrier. And... Yeah, I think maybe people haven't played it too much, but this is a very powerful ship. This is a very powerful ship, all right? I know the Russian uh, CV line, I think, has been nerfed a little bit here and there, but the amount of planes that this thing can chuck out, of course, the gimmick of the Russian line is that every single plane in your squadron is dumping all of its payload the instant you do your first drop. Um, it's extremely powerful. I think that... Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, given that I haven't really been playing too many carriers over the last few years. I am starting to get into it a bit, and to me, Chikalov seems like an easy S tier for the meta pick. Um, it doesn't feel that bad going against tier 10s, since you're not flying through a lot of their AA. You go in, get your one drop, and then you're out of there. Um, I think maybe it could be A tier. Keep in mind, I'm not a CV main, but given that the ship is not terribly difficult to play for me as someone who's uh well not good at cvs and still learning i i think i think power level it's got to be a or s tier i'm gonna put it s but again keep in mind i don't really know exactly what i'm talking about considering i don't really play too many carriers i think on the fun to play side of things i think if you're that cv main i think you're really gonna enjoy this thing I think it's very cool to have a single drop and focus on trying to maximize that one drop. You don't have to worry about where your planes are going to go after your drop, if they're heading into a massive AA bubble or something. It's interesting. Um, I think I think if you're not someone who's terribly interested in CBs, you're not going to be terribly interested in this ship at all, since it's carrier gameplay. For me personally, I think I'll just leave it in B tier. I think it's fun enough, but I personally don't enjoy CB gameplay terribly much. As for what chat thinks, it looks like we have a lot of people who just hate carriers, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people who think it's very strong. So between S and A tier, it seems like it's just a high, a high up here. I think a lot of people know how powerful this ship is, and if we look now at its price, 8,550 doubloons. It's a pretty good sale. It's not too much for one of the more powerful, uh, one of the more powerful carriers at tier eight. I think Kaga is the other one you want to look at, uh, but we'll look at that in a little bit on what I think. But they're both very, very strong carriers, and this is a good chance to get a deal on a Chikalov. We don't want people to buy it. Put it in D. <laughs> you know what? To be fair, D D has more votes, so. Chat, chat thinks it's D tier. All right, there you go. <laughs> there we go. So D tier from chat. I think it's mediocre to play, mostly because I don't enjoy carrier games too much, but I do think it's very, very powerful. 
For our next ship, we have a tier eight uh, premium British destroyer. And Cossack is a very interesting one. This ship has really good guns. Although you have to keep in mind that farthest back turret has awful turret angles. And it gives up torpedo power. It doesn't have a lot of torpedoes. Well, they do decent damage. Certainly gives up a lot on its torpedo side. But this ship with its gun power combined with its concealment is a nasty cap contester. I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of dealing with a Cossack in some tier 10 DDs. Like if I'm in a gearing and I think, oh, I just got this. No, a Cossack can win those engagements. Uh, not all the time, obviously, but Cossack using its concealment, its fast cooldown on its smokes, like it those British DDs tend to have, a personal smoke, a personal hydro, I should say. This ship is a lot of fun. I think if you're a gunboat DD player who wants to find a cap controller at tier eight, I think Cossack has got to be it. I think that there's some other solid options like Lo Yang. You got more of a hydro gimmick. We'll look at that in a little bit. Um, I, th I think you're just so much more consistent here because you're outspotting everything. It's insane that you get basically the best torpedo destroyer level concealment with some of the better guns at the tier. Um, they don't typically do that with DDs. Typically, if you have better, the better your guns are, the worse your concealment is. Uh, but this thing is an exception. So I think it's really, really powerful. I'm, I'm actually going to put it up in S tier meta. I think... I think it's really strong. I think the only problem with it is if you're trying to farm damage. Longer range, the shells get floaty, and that is tough to deal with considering the meta is so passive. But if you're trying to win games by just going after caps, going after DDs, Cossack is really powerful. It's tier eight. It's really, really powerful. It, it outdoes a lot of tier nines even, tier tens sometimes. I think on the fun to play side of things, it can be very, very fun, um, but I'm only gonna put it A tier. And the reason being is it's passive meta these days. Sometimes you just find yourself just sailing around, not really doing much uh, when the enemy team is playing so passive. I think that most of the time, it's quite an enjoyable destroyer to play. I love the concealment, but yeah, it's, it's not great into passive meta if you're trying to farm damage and get big numbers. Not much fun versus radar cruisers. True. It is not very much fun versus radar cruisers. And it looks like, uh, as chat says, A tier. S tier, A tier, B tier. Pretty even split there. So I'm happy with that. A solid A tier. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's a great ship. So this ship is 6,850 doubloons, which is a decent sale. 30% off. This ship is normally available. So... If you've been waiting for the Cossack to be on a bit of a sale, or you, I think it's worth picking up. Um, I like this one a lot, and this is your opportunity to get it at a discount. Uh, keep in mind, though, I'm going to say that a lot for a lot of these ships. I think it's a decent pickup. That's something I am going to say, considering a lot of these premium ships are pretty fun. They're reasonably powerful, good way to grind credits. So just know, though, you don't have to buy all of them. <laughs> That's certainly not something you have to do because they are very expensive if you do that. But if you've been looking for that DD Hunter cap controller at tier eight, I think Cossack is gonna be one of the better ones. And just to spoil it, I do think it's a little better than Lo Yang. So um, I would take that over a Lo Yang at tier eight as a cap controller gunboat DD kind of thing. So we're gonna take a look at Dunkirk real quick since it's not available this Black Friday. It was available last Black Friday, much like the um, Shinonome is right now is in a sequential bundle. It might show up again later, so I'm gonna cover it just quickly uh, Just to make sure I have all the Black Friday ships available. It might be available in another uh, Black Friday event, but Dunkirk, I don't think it's particularly powerful. The guns are pretty wonky very trolly RNG a lot of overmatch at this tier Dunkirk doesn't have especially good armor, but it can move around the map reasonably quickly um, I think as far as tier six battleships goes, it's a little bit on the weaker side. I would put it, it I'd probably put it C tier. It can still do good work because at these lower tiers, of course, we got insanely squishy cruisers a lot of the time and it's got reasonably punchy AP. So you're going to do okay against broadside battleships as well. But smaller caliber kind of can be a little bit annoying. As for the fun to play argument, I think I think it's not very fun to play. I think at tier six, trolley dispersion, low caliber, overmatched everywhere by all the battleships, HE's gonna crush you. 
I don't enjoy playing Dun uh, Dunkirk very much at all. So I'm actually going to put it C or C tier as well. It's not my favorite thing. I just don't want to play it. Uh, some people do enjoy it though, uh, but that is not me. If it does come up again for Black Friday, well, it's probably going to be on a bit of a discount of some kind. But this is one you can get normally as well. Looks like uh, chat is between C and D tier, which I totally agree with. Uh, but you know what? They're saying more towards uh, D tier, so we'll put it down here as well. So next we're looking at another tier eight uh, carrier. That's a premium, the Graf Zeppelin. This is a ship that was insanely strong and overtuned when it came out, but of course it's changed a lot since the uh, CV rework. I think that it seems like it's not a particularly strong tier 8 carrier. Again, I haven't played these things a ton, I've only recently started playing these carriers. But the planes seem quite weak, and given that uh, it doesn't do a ton of damage really, it kind of relies on its secondaries to be a fun meme ship. So given that we're looking at the meta right now, I'll put it just a C tier I guess. I don't think it's necessarily as bad as, you know, at Atlanta at its tier. It's still a carrier. You're still providing some amazing spotting and support like that. Uh, but I think that it's just below average, and you're going to be better off with a Chagalov or the Kaga, for example, if you're trying to really play a carrier game. As for if it's fun to play, I think if you roll with your buddies and go a full secondary brawler meme build, I think you can have a ton of fun in it. If you're just playing it as a normal carrier, I think it's not going to be particularly fun to play at all. So it really depends on you. Uh, but I would, yeah, I would put it C or D tier. I think for me, I'll put it D tier because I just have no interest in really playing a really weak carrier like this. <laughs> like I said, Chikalov, it's really strong and I still don't find it that enjoyable to play. So it's not a very fun time for me personally. As for what chat thinks, looks like they're torn between C and D tier. Um, yeah, so, you know, they're a little more towards C, so we'll put it up at C tier. They like the Graf Zeppelin more than they liked the Chikalov, although that one maybe was uh, a bit of people looking to drag the Chikalov down. <laughs> Chikalov's definitely a little bit better. So given the Graf Zeppelin is nearly 10,000 doubloons, it's a decent sale price, but... I don't think it's really all that worth picking up. Maybe if you're trying to do that fun secondary brawling thing, it's worth it to you, uh, but it's pretty expensive still. Next one. Oh, this one people are not gonna like me over. <laughs> uh, oh boy. <laughs> so for our next ship, we have another one that's been removed from normal sale. This is really your only a good opportunity to buy a Jean Bart. So saying that up front, if you've always wanted a Jean Bart, this is the time to get it. Uh, for me personally though, I don't like this ship. I'm not sure where exactly I want to put it, um, how much I want to enrage the community or not, uh, but I could put it D tier, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes I really, really, really dislike this ship. It's got such bad dispersion, and the problem with Jean Bart is that I have a Borgone. And every time I play a Jean Bart, I think to myself, I could have been in a Borgone. And then I'm sad because this ship has much worse effective dispersion, right? Eight guns instead of 12. You still get the reload booster, which is nice, but you don't have the maneuverability. The ship is so much slower and clumsier than a Borgone. And that really, really plays into the playstyle. I think Borgone being much faster and more agile allows it to get more flanks. And with that, the smaller caliber doesn't matter as much. Of course, we also have more guns. So we're able to negate or deal with some of that wonky dispersion. So I'm not really sure how badly I want to put this thing, but I'm going to put it a B. I know people love this ship, um, but I will say it's a B tier. I think it's an okay tier nine battleship. It's not amazing. I really don't think so. If you're someone who's never going to get the steal for a Borgone and you want the reload booster gimmick at higher tier, give it a go, sure. But I think that if you have any chance of getting a Borgone, you will not need a Jean Bart. It's just worse in every way. And I know it's a tier lower, but it's massively worse. 
As for it being fun to play, uh, I think it has the opportunity to be quite fun since you have that uh, reload booster. It's fun to shoot at someone and then instantly pop your booster and shoot at them again like 10 seconds later when they're not expecting it. It's very quick, easy uh, damage to get. It's very versatile in that way, but it doesn't have the maneuverability like the... Uh, like the Borgone does. So I know it's tough because I'm comparing a tier 10 ship that's really strong against a tier nine. It's not really fair, but I'm just always wanting to be in my Borgone when I'm in my Jean Bart. I'm just always sad. So I'm, I'm actually gonna put this C tier as fun to play alongside the Dunkirk. I do not enjoy playing this ship at all. As for what chat thinks, this is a more, uh, reasonable take i think i think that one's not going to be go over too well with people <laughs> chat thinks it's a tier uh which you know i think is fair enough i think it probably should be at that power level if it is a tier 9 version of a borgone but i don't like this i don't like it personally but i think a lot of you will enjoy it if you get it the reload booster can be a lot of fun to play around with and at tier 9 yeah i think that overall it probably could be s tier like some of these others like alaska but you're going against super ships and that is a lot of 32 millimeter overmatch to deal with as well so the price 16,550 doubloons very expensive although not the most expensive uh we'll get to that later but john bart it's pricey and personally i wouldn't go for this one i know it's really not available collectors will want it I know, I'm, I'm not very high on this ship at all. It's quite expensive, and I think there's more fun, better options as we go, uh, as we move on. For the next ship, we're looking at the Kaga. This is another tier eight premium carrier, and probably the best one, uh, given that the Chikalov has been nerfed a little bit, I believe. Um, I'm actually not sure if it actually got the same nerfs as the Tech Tree Russian uh, carriers did. Kaga has a very similar level of power to its strikes as the Chikalov does, just with way more planes. This ship basically does not run out of planes. And that is extremely powerful as you go into higher tier, where AA can do a little bit to you. Uh, not a ton still, but of course, tier 10 AA will shred through tier 8 carriers. And at the end of the game, it's likely that you're not going to have that many planes left. But Kaga will. So I think for that reason alone, it does at least as much damage as Chikalov and doesn't run out of planes. It's got to be up here. As for being fun to play, I think that given that it has pretty reasonable torps, dive bombers, uh, rocket planes to use, I think it's reasonably fun to play. Um, it's nice to not really have to worry about running out of planes at all in this one. Uh, but again, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it B tier because again, I'm not. I'm not the CV main yet. I'm still trying to learn them to understand how to play against them better. Like I said, but again, it's not really my thing. So I think putting it B tier for me. It's reasonable to play, but I don't really want to do it all the time. Now let's see what chat thinks. They are. They are S tier. Yep, they are definitely in the S tier. Uh, which, keep in mind, the Chikalov was between S and A tier. Um, it was still S tier, but with a little bit uh, more towards A tier. So Chad thinks Kaga is better than the Chikalov. Of course, we put it down here because they eventually overtook <laughs> with the D tier votes. Uh, but yeah, it's a good, good tier A carrier. Uh, but again, I'm not a huge carrier player, so you're going to probably want to look at someone who is more of a CV player to know more about the ship. Also, keep in mind the price being 7850 means it's a little cheaper than the Chikalov even, and it seems like it's a little bit better. So, a decent deal if you're a carrier main and looking for your one premium carrier to get. Uh, seems like Kaga is a pretty good option. Next, we're looking at the premium uh, tier 9 American battleship or hybrid battleship. We got the Kearsarge. I think this ship is extremely powerful when you're using it right. The ability to go scout and spot anything you want to is extremely powerful for a battleship. And it also has 12 406 millimeter guns. No, they're not the Montanas. They're more like the North Carolinas. So a little floatier, a little less pennant range, but they're still really, really strong. 
the only big issues here are the maneuverability and the giant tumor on the uh, superstructure here. So it's something that if you get into close range fights, you will take a lot of damage. Got a lot of HP still, and the belt armor is pretty good, assuming you're staying angled. It's just that at closer ranges, it's tough to make this ship work because everyone just farms your superstructure. But that said, most people understand to not play at closer ranges with this ship. So I think that the power level on this ship is at least A tier. I, I would be very tempted to put this in S tier simply because that's scouting. Scouting, scouting is just something that a battleship has never been able to do for itself. That was one of its main weaknesses that it has to rely on teammates to spot and scout things for it. But we face super ships. And that is really hard to deal with. So I'm going to leave it in A. I think A is fine for it as far as it being in the meta. It's a really strong ship still, but super ships are tough to play against, man. As far as it being fun to play, for me personally, I think this is an easy C tier for me. It's not a battleship I want to play very often. It works. It's all right. Um, it's very powerful with that scouting but I personally want to get in there and brawl a little bit more, and I always play a little too aggressive for the size of the superstructure. And as we can see here on the uh, chat community side of things, they're B, A, or S tier. So I think more people are leaning towards B, but there's enough people on S tier. Um, we're, looking, we're looking between A and B tier. So a strong ship, uh, but they're leaning towards B. So we'll put it there. So given that the Kearsarge costs 16,350 doubloons, which is a lot, uh, and it's a coal ship, uh, I don't recommend buying this one for real money. I think you should just save up for it if you want it. Coal is something that you can get out of every single one of your daily crates that you're earning for just playing the game. There's a lot of combat missions, although those are being rolled into uh, the dockyard and uh, battle pass now. So. If you engage with those at all, if you play ranked, if you play the game is basically what I'm saying. Play the game, you're gonna earn coal. You'll get this ship eventually. It's very expensive for real money right now though. So next we've got the Lo Yang. This is a ship that's been in the game a long time and was the first one to have this hydro smoke gimmick where you're able to pop your hydro, smoke up, and whatever's within that hydro range will just stay spotted and you can farm it out. An extremely early on powerful cap contester early on in the game's life this was easily the strongest cap contester it's still pretty good this hydro gimmick is very strong although we don't have really the best hydro at the tier anymore and given that most people already know about it they're not going to be surprised by this hydro it's tough to make use of these days. You only have four guns. You don't even have five guns like a lot of the American DD line does have. It's it's not the highest DPM. And the Torps, well, you do have a couple options, longer range that have less damage and are slower or some very short range, very fast, high damage dealers. They're hard to make use of. And this ship really does struggle in the passive meta, I would say. I think overall on uh, the power level side of things, I think I would just put it in B tier for now. Um, I don't think it's really that meta defining anymore. The reason it's so much lower than Cossack really is because Cossack will outspot a Lo Yang and it'll outgun it. <laughs> and they're both cap contesters. <laughs> so it's tough to play Lo Yang these days. It's really not the easiest thing in the world. But it's still strong enough, given it has a decent Hydro, and you can catch people off guard with it still. I think as far as it being fun to play, I think it's a nice challenge. I think it's fun to go after cap control like that, uh, but it's, it's not the easiest. So for me, I would have to put it in B tier. I think this ship can be a lot of fun to play, uh, but it relies a lot on people not knowing about your gimmick or being able to use island cover within these caps to make use of it. And again, if you're looking for a damage farmer, damage dealer kind of ship, this is not it. This is a pure cap contester DD. As for the chat side of things, what do we think? Looks like it's between A and B, which is, I think, pretty good. Um, it's a decent ship, but I don't think it's the most powerful anymore. 
As for the price of the Loyang, it's 5,750 doubloons, which is not terribly expensive for a tier 8 premium. It's a decent deal, but I don't think that it's the most engaging ship or powerful ship, so it's up to you, really. I don't really think I would be buying it personally anymore. Uh, it was very powerful a long time ago, but no longer. But it's still interesting. I think you can get the similar playstyle out of some of the tech tree ships with hydros these days as well. So if you're looking for just the playstyle, you can get that elsewhere for a lot cheaper. Our next ship is the Mines, new to the Black Friday fleet uh, this year. And it's really strong. This ship has some of the best DPM at tier 8. It's a light cruiser with decent HP actually, and a bit of a turtleback as well. Um, if you're able to find the right situation, the DPM is amazing. The HE is very good, of course. You have uh, improved pen, like a lot of the German HE does have. So you don't even need to take IFHE to pen 32 millimeters. The AP, though, is way better. The, the DPM is just insane. So if you're able to catch someone broadside, it's a lot of fun. Of course, it doesn't have a heel. Like I mentioned with the Otago, we uh, like having a heel on our cruisers so we can play aggressive and actually take some punishment and still be able to play into the late game. Uh, so for me personally, I think on the meta side of things, I think I think it's an A or an S tier for tier eight cruiser strength. Um, I think I'll leave it I'll leave it in A tier though, just because it doesn't have a heal. And it's very hard to play because of that. So if you're not very good with cruisers, I think it's gonna be a very difficult ship for you to play. But if you're a very good cruiser player, you're gonna love mines. Mines feels great. Uh, fun to play factor. I think that's an A tier for me. I, I think the DPM is just hilarious. And uh, you can always find an enjoyable time with this ship, I think. Um, so yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And as we'll talk about in a bit, the uh, discount you get is pretty good right now. Now to see what uh, chat thinks. Looks like they're between A and B tier, but for this one, more people leaning to A tier. And yeah, looks like we agree. Very strong ship. Uh, if it had a heal, S tier for sure. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's probably good it doesn't have a heal. This thing would be a menace at its tier. Uh, but yeah, A tier, it's very solid. And of course, if we look at the price, 7,850 doubloons, nice discount. Although this ship is always available, so there's a good opportunity to get a discount on it, but no rush if you just don't have the money right now or anything like that. You can get it later. It's not one of these ships that's been removed from standard sale. But for right now, I think this is one of the better deals, a good ship to pick up. If you're a cruiser player looking for a fun, high DPM, uh, pretty risky cruiser, high risk, high reward for this one. If you're able to play it in a, up close in a brawl, it's pretty amazing. Massachusetts is our next ship to look at. And this ship, I have very much said in the past, is my favorite ship in the entire game. And I'm quite sad that they removed it from sale. But you can still get it on Black Friday and they keep bringing it back, which is nice. At least the last couple of years, we've had the option to get it. So. If you want a brawling tier eight battleship that's really strong, I think Massachusetts is the ship you should get. I think that as a tier eight battleship, it is one of the best. You won't see it in clan battles quite as much because people will value Lenin's uh, HP and uh, ability to bow tank a lot better. It's a farmable superstructure, uh, certainly. But in random battles, wow, this thing is awesome. Uh, long range secondaries that are quite accurate if you give them time to uh, heat up a little bit. And of course the fast cooldown heal. It's very, very tough to kill. I think that the other thing that is a little underrated about Massachusetts is its dispersion. It's actually not as bad as the stats would show. It's not that much worse than NC. It is worse, but it has some of these weird perfect salvos every once in a while and it's very very strong 406 is at the tier of course if you're playing a german battleship that's a brawler secondary focus you don't get 406s you get some more overmatch on this side of things overall i really like playing massachusetts it's better than the Turpets, bismarck i think it's the best brawling tier 8 battleship at all the problem is the meta doesn't really facilitate much brawling anymore uh, but still i think it's a very strong ship uh, for me personally, I think I think it's an S tier as far as meta strength goes. 
you're not really getting much better at tier eight. Even tier nine, I think this is better than a lot of tier nine battleships. And just because this is actually going to be my number one recommended ship for Black Friday, I'm gonna put it up here. It's above S tier. If you're have if you have money to spend on World of Warships, this is the ship you should get. Only one. If you're thinking, oh, I don't know what to get, just get a Massachusetts, okay? It's easily, easily, okay? The best ship available here at its tier, most fun to play. It's so good, guys. It's so good. Even though I've been a little down on it recently, thanks to the meta, it's still just so good. And this is your only opportunity to get it. I think it's very much worth it. Chat appears to be in agreement here. We're up at S tier. So we're just we're just gonna leave it up here, okay? It's above S tier. This is the one you should get. If you're wondering, okay, I don't know what whether I should spend my money on this or not. That's a fair thing. If you're not gonna spend any money on the game, fair enough, okay? But if you're willing to spend some, this is the one to get. It is 9,000 doubloons, so it's a little more expensive than some of the tier eights, but considering it's a little over half the cost of an Alaska or a Jean Bart, it's gotta be this one. Guys, it's way cheaper than the tier nines that are getting screwed over by super ships, and it's better at its tier. I just, I can't stress this enough. It's so good. It's so, so good. So new to this year, we have a tier 10 Black Friday ship. We got the Napoli B. And Napoli is a very, very strong tier 10. It is tankier than the Petro, uh, which we all know is like an impossibly difficult deal ship to kill. And it has decent guns. It's got sap secondaries, unlike the mainline Italian cruisers. You have HE and AP in your main guns. The sap is in the secondaries. You get some torpedoes, which are just okay, but a secondary focused cruiser that's extremely tanky and has a fuel smoke is pretty amazing. Keep in mind, the smoke fire penalty is actually shorter than your secondary range. So you can be smoked up, shooting someone with your main guns and your secondaries, and you won't be spotted. It's, it's hilarious to play. Um, I love playing Napoli, very aggressive, following DDs in who will spot for me. It's a good ship, okay? I think on the meta, it's high. I, I think that's an S tier for sure. It's a very, very, very strong ship. I think fun to play, also a very easy S for me. Concealment is great as well. The only concern really is the range and the long range ability of the ship, but given you have this fuel smoke gimmick, you, you can get in. You can definitely get in and brawl. This is a ship that you should not ha be having that many issues with most games. Looking at the uh, chat here as well, they're on the S tier train as well. So it's a very, very strong ship. The problem is the price. I'm sure you've seen it by now, but 30,000 doubloons is a little bit much, especially considering this is a coal ship. This isn't something that is removed from the game. This isn't something that is an insane resource like steel to get for, you know, the vast majority of people. Coal is something everyone earns at a pretty steady rate. I think you can save up for Napoli, so I don't recommend you buy it. I really don't. Um, I know that it might be tempting to get it right now, considering I just praised it and chat thinks it's good. We think it's fun to play, but I think you should save up with coal and get this thing if you want it. For our next ship, we have a Palmer. This is a brawling secondary tier 9 battleship. It has hydro and torps, something that the Tirpitz doesn't have, right? We've looked at uh, some of those battleships being pretty good in the past, but not so much anymore. And that is Palmer in a nutshell. This ship, when it came out, was pretty good. The meta was already shifting away from it, but it was pretty solid when it came out. The problem with Palmer is low caliber, really bad dispersion, Poor firing angles, meaning you have to show a lot of broadside to actually shoot all of your 12 guns. And the secondaries, while a fun gimmick, are just outmatched by the new Battlecruiser line. The, they're just better secondary ships. I think the big other issue with Pomeran specifically is it's based on the Freddy hull. This is getting into the thick of things a little too much, but the Turtleback doesn't go as far down below the water on a Pomeran and a Freddy. So you're more likely to get citadeled when you do show broadside, which you have to do to shoot all these guns. 
Uh, it's tough to play these days. Long range, it doesn't do great. The massive superstructure, like all German battleships, is very easy to farm. So I don't think this ship is great power level wise right now. I'm not gonna rate it a D. I still think it's better than D tier. Um, it can work, but again, I would probably put it up in B tier if it wasn't for super ship games and the extreme passive meta we have now in those double up tiers. It suffers much like the other tier nines do. As for the fun to play side of things, I think it is a fun ship still. If you can manage the expectations that you're not going to be able to brawl most games. So I would put it, I would put it in B or A tier. I think, I think it is probably a little more fun for me personally than some of these other ships in B tier. So because of that, I'll actually put it in A. I'm still a brawling battleship player uh, as much as it frustrates me and pains me these days. Uh, I still try it and I still think it can be fun, but there are much better versions. There are much better versions if you want to play that kind of play style. Napoli, Massachusetts specifically. Uh, but A is probably a little too high, but I have so many in B tier that I would say this is a low A tier for me. High B tier. And as we can see, chat is at C tier, which I think is totally reasonable. It's not a great ship these days. Uh, the matchmaker struggles. Much better ships have come in around it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. So the next ship we're looking at is another tier 8 premium carrier, this time the Saipan. Uh, a very strong ship back in the RTS days, but I think it's just been mediocre since the CV rework. Again, I am not an expert here. I don't really know these things too well. Uh, the gimmick being that it has smaller squadrons, tier 10 planes. Uh, but I'll put it in B tier. It's still a carrier. It's still pretty strong. Maybe it goes A. I'm not sure. You're, you're going to have to look at someone who knows carriers a little better than me. Uh, but again, I think the two main carriers, if you're looking for that, are pretty clearly Kaga, or if not Kaga, Chikala. I think that's the most powerful ships you're gonna get. Uh, as for fun to play, I think that having higher tier planes is cool, uh, but I don't know if smaller squadrons is really worth it or not. I'm gonna go B tier. It's just another carrier to me. That's really what it comes down to. Might even put it down in C tier since smaller squads, more punishing if you lose those squads, that kind of thing. As for chat, looks like they've uh, banded together and decided they don't like carriers, so they want it D tier. <laughs> uh, but looks like they're thinking for power level wise, the people voting on that are probably in the B tier camp, so it's just an okay ship. Um, but it looks like people are looking for D tier, so. They've decided, along with the Chikalov, that they don't like carriers, so we'll put it down here. So now we're looking at the Scharnhorst. This is a tier seven German battleship. Uh, came out a long time ago. It was very strong when it came out. A lot of fun to play. And then the meta shifted. Uh, this ship certainly went from a good S tier, I would say down towards a B or C tier. The guns are pretty underwhelming, uh, but I like it. I like this ship a lot, and I do think that now that Tier 9 is fighting against super ships more often, we're seeing a little bit less of those Tier 9 up tiers, giving Sharnhorse a little more room to breathe, um, and it's a pretty solid secondary battleship. It got some range buffs on its secondaries too, um, with some of these uh, patches and balance changes a little while ago. So 9.5 kilometer range secondaries, torps, good armor, um, fast rotating turrets with smaller caliber guns, but you're going after cruisers with the guns, and then you get into closer range brawls against battleships, that's where you're going to shine with those secondaries and torpedoes. Uh, no, no hydro here, which is a little disappointing, but it's a pretty fun ship to play overall. I think as far as tier 7 meta goes, I think it's an A tier. I think this is a pretty solid ship again. Uh, I probably would have put it B tier before super ships, uh, but now that super ships are here, I want to leave it in A tier. And as far as fun to play, I think, I actually think Sharnors goes up in S tier for fun to play. If I'm playing mid tier, I'm probably going to pick a Sharnors. I'll be honest. If, if I'm going below tier eight, where I, I pick my Massachusetts, uh, I'm probably picking a Sharnors if I'm playing tier seven. I'm trying to get that brawling secondary focus, um, and Sharnors definitely uh, gets that done. 
which is maybe a little higher than most people would put it. But again, I'm a battleship player who enjoys the close range brawling side of things. So keep that in mind. Um, I do like the Sharnor still a lot. Uh, but let's look at what chat thinks. Chat thinks it's between A and B tier, which I would say is per perfectly reasonable. They're more towards B tier. I think calling it an average ship is totally fair because there are going to be circumstances where it sucks. As for the cost, it's 6,850 doubloons, which is pretty decent. Although, keep in mind, a couple thousand more doubloons, you get yourself a Massachusetts, which is much better at its tier. Uh, I think Sharnors is fun, but if you've only got one ship to spend on, get yourself a Massachusetts. It's just the same playstyle, but better. Up next, we're looking at the Shinonome. This is the one in the sequential bundles, at least for this Black Friday in 2022. It's a tier six Japanese destroyer that has the old gun reload. So some of the changes that happened to uh, Japanese destroyers, I might've said cruisers earlier, sorry, it's getting, I'm getting tired. Uh, but Japanese DDs, uh, they used to have a way longer reload and uh, the guns hit a little bit harder too because of that. Shinonome still has that and it's not great. The gun turret traverse is pretty slow. Although the Torps aren't bad for tier six, like most of the Japanese destroyers, they're pretty good uh, when it comes to torpedoes. But I really can't recommend you buy this ship, and we'll get into that later, but the campaign, just do the campaign, really. As for the power level, um, it's decent for a tier six DD, but I'm looking for guns at this tier. I'm really looking for guns. It's much more impactful at this tier. Uh, a lot of cruisers don't have armor. They're much more maneuverable. Battleships are much more maneuverable. A lot more people are dodging torpsies at these tiers and not really getting too much hit by them. So I don't know. I don't think I don't really play tier six much, but on the meta side, I think it's low, low C tier, high D tier. You can make it work, but it's not great. Um, as for the fun side of things, I'm going to I'm going to leave it in C tier for fun. It's OK. I would probably rather play some other DDs though for gunboats. As for the chat side of things, looks like they're very much in the D tier camp as well. It's not a great ship, but then again, it was meant as a free reward. If you go into the campaigns tab on the left side of your port, you have the initial campaigns. They haven't done these in a very, very, very long time. I think they were an interesting idea, a wave, a, a sort of mission chain that was always there available to you. You can get things like Halsey out of this one of these campaigns, I believe. Yamamoto was one of these campaigns. Uh, and Shinonome was a reward at the end of another one. And it was a decent reward for that. But I wouldn't recommend buying it then, because you can get it for free. Now we're looking at the Sims, a tier seven American destroyer. This is one of the most maneuverable ships in the entire game. Uh, it's got decent gun power for its tier two, decent concealment. Uh, the Torps were recently buffed from uh, the basically useless sea mines that they used to be. Uh, so it's not a bad ship these days. It's got a really good American smoke with it as well. Uh, it's quite fun to play because of the maneuverability. You can just kind of dodge most things if you're paying attention. But it doesn't have the most gun power. Again, you're missing a turret from the Mayhan, for example. Um, so it's, it's just okay, I would say. As far as the meta goes, it's certainly not a bad tier seven DD, but there are much more powerful versions of this ship. I think as far as fun to play goes, I think it's a pretty fun ship to play. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna put it in A tier. I think it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting ship to play because it's so maneuverable and you get a lot of just go shoot your guns because that's what you've got. It's an early gunboat DD that can do a lot of work in cap control. It can do a lot of team play. It's a fun ship overall. And as we can see, chat thinks it's between A and B as well. So pretty good ship. Uh, keep in mind that, you know, it's not going to be the most meta defining thing in the world, but it's pretty fun. And considering the Sims is only 3,700 doubloons, it's one of the cheaper ships here for Black Friday. Uh, it's not a bad ship to pick up, but again, you don't have to get this thing. It's very much a ship that can have the same play style found in the tech tree. Uh, but I think it's a very enjoyable ship to play too. Next up, we got the Tirpitz, one of the original German battleships, a ship that's been buffed over time. The ship didn't always have its long range secondaries. Um, it was very good when it came out, very fun, brawly ship to play. The Torps were hilarious. 
But these days, I think the Bismarck is just better, even though they play basically the same. Overall, I'd rather have the Hydro instead of the Torpedoes, since most of the time we're not getting in range to use them. And, of course, we also have to consider Turpets sits a little higher out of the water than the Bismarck. Bigger target, takes more damage, easier to hit. Uh, but the Turpets isn't bad. It can work. It's a decent brawler. Uh, but it's no, it's nothing special. I think at its tier, I'd say it's B. But, of course, the Massachusetts is just a little bit better. Uh, the Turpets is a pretty fun ship to play as well. Um, I think that I would probably put it in A tier here alongside Palmer. It's a decent brawler. I'll play it from time to time, but I would very much take a Massachusetts over a Turpets. That is for sure. Uh, given that uh, chat also thinks that Turpets is B tier, I think it's a reasonable brawling battleship at the tier. The problem is here, at least for Black Friday, this is kind of the only shot once a year where you can actually buy the Massachusetts, and it's just a way better ship. So I have to recommend that over the Turpets, if you're thinking about a Turpets. And for our last ship, we have the Yoshino. This is a Tier 10 uh, Japanese cruiser that has extremely long-range torpedoes and main guns. This is really good for the meta. So I'm actually going to put it up in A tier. I think as far as a meta power level pick, it's really good. The HE hits really hard. The AP is surprisingly good as well, although not as good as some other 305 millimeter cruisers like Stalingrad, for example. Uh, but the HE hits really, really hard. And the thing that sets the Yoshino apart from some of the other 305 millimeter cruisers like the Alaska as well, for example, is the reload. The reload is actually much better. So we have better HE and we have a better reload. So this is a really good farming ship from long range. So A tier power level, I think makes some sense here. Although as fun as it is uh, to farm from max range, uh, well, I don't think it's very fun to farm from max range. So I'm actually gonna put it in C tier for fun. I do not enjoy Yoshino at all. I think it's very boring to play. It is powerful. It's a very, very strong long range HE ship but I don't have fun doing that. So I don't really think it's worth picking up, at least if you're looking for an action-oriented ship. As for chat, it looks like they are split between B and C with some up to A tier. Uh, so even though there's a few more who are saying C tier, um, it's somewhere in here. I think we'll put it, well, we can put it towards C tier. I think that's fine. It's not an amazing ship. It's tough to play, vulnerable Citadel, very vulnerable to overmatch. It's large, kind of clumsy, but it's got very, very good gun power. Keep in mind though, considering it's a tier 10 here for Black Friday, they are both very expensive. So the Yoshino is also just under 30,000 doubloons. Considering it's available for coal as well, I can't really recommend you guys buy these ships, right? You just save up the coal and get them for free if you really want these ships. So that is our tier list. This is every single Black Friday ship that has been released so far and how I feel about them. I do think that if you have only one ship you can get, just get the Massachusetts. I think it's easily the best ship available for the price. As you get into tier nine and tier 10, they get pretty expensive. Um, the tier eights are still at least a reasonable-ish price, I guess I would say. Uh, but keep in mind that it is still quite expensive, so you don't have to spend money on this game if you don't want to. These are my thoughts on the meta, at least. This is how powerful I think these ships are relative to their tier and what matchmaker they face. Keep in mind, a lot of the tier nines have been moved down a notch or two, considering they're fighting a lot of super ships. Something like Sharn Horse comes up because tier nines are getting pulled into super ship meta, so we see less tier nines in our Sharn Horse, which helps us out a lot. Uh, as far as being fun to play, this is very personal preference, but this is kind of the idea here is I like brawling, I like battleships, I like high DPM things, um, I don't enjoy sniping from the back as much, it gets a little bit boring, that kind of thing, not a fan of carriers as much, um, and this is what chat thought. This is what at least the people that are here in Twitch chat tonight uh, had to say about at least all of these uh, Black Friday ships. Pretty balanced, actually, on the chat side. So maybe they got things a little bit more right than I did. Uh, but there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Again, I do recommend not gambling on these things. If there's a ship you want, just buy it outright. 
it's going to be cheaper in the long run. There's no way they haven't done the math behind the scenes and the, behind the drop rates that say, on average, it's going to spend more money to get the ship you want out of the loot boxes than it would be just to buy it up front. That's just pretty simple, I think. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.